So guys, now in this section, we will going to cover recursive mutexes. So first we will going to understand that what exactly recursive mutexes are and where to use recursive mutex and why. Then we will going to discuss the POSIX inbuilt recursive mutex APIs. So your POSIX standard provides the inbuilt support for recursive mutexes. And after having discussed the inbuilt support of recursive mutexes, then we will discuss how you can implement your own recursive mutex using normal mutex. This exercise will be helpful. For example, it would make you learn that how recursive mutexes can be implemented if you were to implement your own. Let us suppose that you works in an XYZ programming language and that language has a support of normal mutexes but do not have a support of recursive mutexes. Then you should be in a position to implement your own recursive mutexes. All right. So it is always good to learn how to develop or implement things which works behind the scenes. So now let us discuss what recursive mutexes are. So we know that a normal mutex which is already logged by a thread cannot be logged by the same thread again. Any attempt to lock already logged normal mutex by the same thread leads to deadlock. All right. So for example, you have a thread T1 and it is executing. And let us suppose that at some point it obtains a lock on a mutex. All right. So let's say that this M represents the normal mutex. Then your thread goes ahead and do some work. And due to some programming error, let us suppose that your thread T1 invokes the same API. That is, it tries to lock the same mutex again. Now at this point, your thread will enter into the deadlock situation. When it is a normal mutex, a thread which has already obtained a lock on a normal mutex successfully will enter into a deadlock situation if it tries to obtain a lock on the same mutex again. All right. So recursive mutex are nothing but they just work like normal mutexes. The only difference is that that the only difference is that that recursive mutexes can be locked by the same thread as many number of times as it wishes. All right. So in this example, suppose this M represents recursive mutex instead of normal mutex. So the thread T1 locks the recursive mutex here and your thread goes on to do some other work. And then at this point, your thread again locks the same recursive mutex and your thread again moves forward to do another piece of work. So you can see that at this point, your thread do not enters into the deadlock state despite the fact that it is trying to obtain a lock on the recursive mutex again. So this is what recursive mutexes are. A recursive mutex can be locked by the same thread again and again. And remember a thread has to unlock as many times as it has locked it. So in order to release the mutex completely, a thread has to unlock the same mutex as many times as it has locked. So in this example, the thread T1 has obtained the lock on the recursive mutex two times. So it means that the thread T1 has to invoke an API P thread mutex unlock on the recursive mutex two times in order to release the recursive mutex completely. So now let us discuss that how we can define and use recursive mutex in a program. So in order to declare recursive mutex variable, we use the same data type that is pthread mutex t. All right. The only difference is that that we need to define the attribute variable and this attribute variable can be used to state that this particular mutex is actually recursive mutex. So you just initialize this attribute variable by using pthread mutex attribute in it API. And within this attribute, simply set the recursive property of the mutex by using this particular constant. So pthread mutex recursive is a constant identifier which you should specify in pthread mutex attribute set type API so that using pthread mutex init API, we can bind the attributes with our mutex. And since in this attribute we have defined 
that are mutexes recursive in nature. Therefore, this particular mutex would be recursive. All right. So these are the bunch of APIs that you should use in order to define and declare the recursive mutexes in your program. And you can see that it is the POSIX standards which has the inbuilt support for recursive mutexes. The lock and unlock APIs that operates on recursive mutexes would be same. That is pthread mutex lock and pthread mutex unlock. But now, having understood the functionality of these recursive mutexes, a simple question arises that why would a thread need to lock a mutex multiple times in the first place? All right, why would it happen that you attempt to lock a particular mutex by the same thread multiple number of times? So let me show you in the next lecture video a practical example where in big applications it might be possible for a programmer to end up locking the same mutex again and again.